Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, April 27th, and this is another edition of Mrs. Bellow's Messy Desk. This week, we are going to be exploring something that I find absolutely hilarious, both as an art teacher and as someone who has lots of time to spend scrolling things on Instagram or on Facebook. Actually, I don't have a lot of time to do that. However, when I do get a few minutes to kind of zone out and explore the infinite scroll, I do search the hashtag Getty Museum Challenge. The Getty Museum is an art and culture museum in Los Angeles, California. Their challenge was to take an image from their collection and recreate it using only three objects from your house. A pet, a piece of paper, a hat, a vacuum cleaner. You could use anything. Uh, a lot of folks arose to the occasion and then some couldn't be contained with just three objects. Take a look at some of the ones that I've found on the internet. I found these two images on Instagram. The artist that composed both of these photos used items that had different shapes and textures to approximate uh, the props used in the original images. As for the Austrian princess, the toilet paper uh, around the man's head kind of gave the effect of that big hair, right? And then in the second image, the girl's dress was portrayed with this giant, wide, probably a bed or an ironing board covering by a, covered by a sheet. The idea was that the shapes and the textures be replicated in those images. All right, take a look at the next two. The artists that recreated those works of art did a great job of capturing the color and the spirit of the images. You'll notice in these two pictures, as in the two pictures before, that the subject of the recreations was not exactly the same as the original artwork. In the two pictures before, a man portrayed both uh, the Austrian princess and the young girl. And in these two photos that I just showed you, uh, animals that were in the original works of art are represented by, I believe, the artist's children, perhaps. So the point of this being that you just need to capture the colors, the textures, the patterns, uh, and the objects in the frames, and not necessarily represent them exactly the way they were in the original pieces of art. All right, let's take a look at a few more. Here's some other great examples of things that don't actually have to be like they were in the picture. In The Girl with the Pearl Earring, it's a dog. And in The Last Supper, it's a bunch of action figures. <laughs> so really think about how you can with the things that you have, either yourself, your pets, your siblings, or toys, portray the ideas, the objects, the colors, the textures of what you found in the original piece of art. All right, let's take a good long look at one last photo because in my opinion, this one nailed it. Did you notice how similar those images were? Right down to the number of photographs on the artist's easel, amazing. Let's put on our art historian hats and we will talk about what you need to think about when you compose these images. Do you like my art historian hat? Um, actually, it's the same hat from last week and it'll probably be the hat that I wear for the rest of my life because it's a cheeseburger and why not? Um, let's take a look at some artwork images and see what we need to look at to successfully do a Getty Museum challenge. The first one is the objects in the artwork. What's there? Take a good long look. What do you notice? What do you see? What could you use to represent some of these things? Let's take a look. Now that we've thought about the objects in the artwork, what about the colors? What are the boldest colors in the artwork? Are there any bold colors? Or is it all one wash of one same color? 
Um, do you have items that are those colors or could be substituted for those items? Let's take a look at a picture that has some very strong colors. If you were trying to reproduce that image, what would you have used? If you didn't have a red tie, could you have used a red piece of fabric or a red string or maybe a red paintbrush? Anything that would have been the same color would have worked. Okay, next we need to look at pattern. What patterns appear in the painting or in the artwork? In this case, the woman in the painting was wearing a striped dress. So what if you didn't have a blue and white striped dress? I would say that you could still approximate the idea using a different color of stripes. The idea being that she's wearing a striped dress, so maybe something with a striped pattern I could put on my shoulders. All right, next we have shape. I chose a pretty easy example of shape. Did you notice all of the circles? Lots of shapes can be found in artwork. Think back to the picture of the little girl where the dress was so big and wide. The shape of that dress was really, really, really apparent. Very long and wide. And the person wasn't actually wearing a dress. It was probably a, sh a sheet draped over a bed. So think about the shapes that you encounter. All right, the next thing is texture. Texture is a tough one, isn't it? And I chose a tough example. In some other examples, you could have seen perhaps someone wearing a fur hat or a dog with fur. That would be an easy thing to think about texture. But in that last example, there were no animals or people in the picture. It was just a landscape. So how could you recreate that with things that you have at home? Do you have laundry that you could have piled up and arranged or fabric? Or maybe things were square and you could have used Legos. Think outside the human and the pet to compose your photos. Are things bumpy? Are things smooth? Are things furry? Are things rocky? Take a look and see what you think. All right, we're done. Now let's get on to the challenge instructions. Your challenge this week is to recreate an image that you find either in the documents that I attached to the email if you're a Shady Oak Artling or by going on an internet search. There are many, many, many places to find art online. I suggest um, perhaps Norman Rockwell. His images are full of children and families and funny um, scenes that you could recreate pretty easily. Um, there are also classics things like Egyptian statues, Greek statues. Um, you could go look for some crazy surrealist stuff or maybe some impressionist artwork. Go nuts! All right, if you've got all you need, get out of here, go goodbye, stage your images. If you'd like a little bit more direction on what to do and how to set things up, maybe how to figure out how to substitute items, Keep watching the video and we'll set up a few of them for you. All right, so now we're going to go through the process of trying to show you guys how to analyze some images and set up the shots. The first one we're going to try to do is this painting right here, which is a penitent Saint Mary Magdalene made by Titian in 1560 to 1565. And so what we want to notice about the picture is what's in it. So there's a central figure and she has a book, it looks like, with, yes, that is a skull right there. I don't have one of those. Uh, there's also a vase, it looks like, somewhere on the table. And she is looking up kind of either wistfully or kind of she's not having it today I don't know but she has on some blonde hair around her shoulders and then like a white drapey dress and then a stripedy thing on her so and then the background is looks like it's in the uh, 
outside and then some sort of cave like something or other. We'll see what we can do. So here are some things that we might be able to use. I don't have a skull, but I have this round roll of white toilet paper that might could work. And then I've got this giant stack of ugh, really boring textbooks. Yuck. And a blonde wig. Let's see how that works. And then I don't have a stripey wrap, but I have a stripey dress that I could use as a wrap. And then perhaps this. And I think I'll go put on this white shirt and we'll see what we can do. All right. You like my wig? It's kind of crazy looking. Uh, also, the mm -hmm. girl in the picture doesn't have any glasses, so I decided to take my glasses off. So I have no idea what's going on right now. All right, kid. What do we need to do? Um. So we're gonna take the Mechanics of Materials Second Edition. Okay. Awesome book. Okay. Um, and Is yes, this where the take your. To go? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna look at our I think picture. So. We're gonna look at our picture. Um. It's like here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Move this the uh -huh. the, the toilet paper like. Over, more? over, over some more, over some more, more. over some more, more. It's gonna fall off the table. <laughs> yes, but the book is on top of the skull. Oh, I'm gonna, okay, so I was thinking, and I probably should tell you this, that I was going to open a book here, and I need more books to prop up, though. So which one do we want to open? Ooh. Okay, um. All right, how about so biology? So let's, yeah, sure. Biology um, will be the open book. Yeah. Toilet paper, does it need to go this way or that way? The other way. The other way. Okay. Toilet paper. And put it like at a slant. Like at a no, no, other way, other way, other way. Nip, nip, nip. Turn, turn it, turn it, turn it. No, other way, other way, other way, other way. Other way. Other way. Other way. Other way. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to sit up, right? Yeah. Okay. And then um, the base. Uh, base is gonna go what? Here-ish. Other way. Stripey this. Or stripey. she's wearing. She's wearing like. Right, so. Hmm. Try the other one. Okay. This is more like I could actually put this one on. Uh, Maybe. You might be able to put that one on. I'm kind of. She's not like putting it on though. It's more like this. Yeah. On her arm. Is that good? Is that, yeah. Does it matter better. that it's not stripey? Nah. No, it just has the same colors, which okay. is fine. <laughs> Alright. Pose me. Okay, that. That looks. Pretty good. Yes, okay. pose yourself. And then what do my arms need to be doing? I can't remember. Okay, so one, so the arm that's like, that one uh -huh. is like across your midsection. Like this? Or, okay, like that, sure. Um, and then your other arm is basically like that. Just up? Like, yeah, do like I touch that. My, do I touch my chest? Yeah. Okay. Like that. Grab my hair. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> I went to my face! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ignore it. Are you okay? Yes. Do I need to sit up farther? Um, yes. And you okay. need to look up. Okay. Alright, let me get on my knees. Here we go. Be aggravated that you have to do school. You have to look at a biology book. Do I need to maybe put my hand on my book? No, that's that's not what she's doing. Like, ugh. Is that the right thing? Ugh. Yeah. I'm just taking a bunch of pictures right now. Okay, yeah. Does that work? I, I think I think that will work. Alright, hopefully we'll have a good one. Yeah. Cool. Alright. Alright. Alrighty. Okay, next up for your enjoyment is a painting entitled Nativity, and it's a detail from one of the panels by Matthias Grunewald, and it doesn't say when this was done. I'll go look in a minute. But we have a central female figure um, with a it was with the Christ child with a baby, and the central female figure has some blonde hair that's kind of long. She has on a cloak it looks like with a really pretty gold um, cloak tie thingy. She has on a red shirt, uh, red robe perhaps. Looks like she's also got a black or a dark shirt underneath it. Uh, we'll figure that out. And then she is holding this baby in a white drapey cloth. And she might be outside. She's got a halo on. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. But uh, the baby is also holding what looks like a rosary. Um, we don't have a baby in our house. 
but we've got a good idea. Okay, so here's Mrs. Vallow's kid. She has this lovely cloak that is part of a Halloween costume that we're going to use to do that. She's also got a red t-shirt and her hair is down even though it's not quite the right color, which is okay. Um, this lovely fuzzy blanket is going to be what we are going to hold the baby in and the baby is going to be our kitty cat. That should be fun. Okay, do you remember how to do your head? Um, Let's practice. Okay, right arm way up. Okay. okay. All right, so you remember you, you tilt your head to the side, really dumb, really dumb, yep. Now turn slightly, ah, right, perfect, yes. But you have to kind of look like you love him. Oh, it's so cute. Please don't try it's to break his neck like that. Like, um, like oh, I know, it it's crazy. Like All right, you ready? Sure. Can you put the cat in the blanket or do I need to put the cat in the blanket? Put the in the blanket. All right, put the cat in the blanket. Come on, kitty. All right, you're gonna have to go quick because he's not gonna be having it. All right, you gotta pick him up. He's like, no, 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 no. All right, elevate his head. Yes, elevate his head. Oi, poor cat. I hope he doesn't bite you. Maybe I need to help. All right, we gotta go quick. All right, look straight at me. Tilt your head. Look at the kitty. And look with your eyeballs a little bit <laughs> toward me. Look with your eyeballs toward me. Oh my gosh, that poor cat. <laughs> okay, good enough. This is the last photo we are going to try to do, and it is called Dancing Shoes by Helena Schrifferbeck. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. That's okay. From 1882. And we picked this one because we have a stool that's very similar to that stool and a red ottoman. And I actually have a plant that looks kind of like that. And so we are going to get some sort of outfit. We may not be able to match the whole thing because she has on a kind of like a white fluffy dress and a black uh, topper but we're gonna get as close as we can. Okay, so we've got this set up with a curtain that kind of matched the colors-ish of that picture. On the ground is a rug, we've got my high-heeled shoes, the kid is dressed all in black, um, and my camera is picking up the bad lighting. There's my plant on the table and the red ottoman. Okay, for the skirt, we had to improvise. So, tell, show people what this is. Okay, so it's a really tiny dress. It's my tiny dress. It's, it doesn't really fit, so we, we kind of had to improvise. Okay, what are we going to do? Sticking one leg in and tying it around. All right, but it's just the perfect material. And when you sit down, nobody's going to see, right? No. <laughs> you have to tie it perfect. All right, pull it up. All right, it's going to need to fluff over that leg, yes. And I would pull it around your right side just a little bit. You may even sit on it a little bit. Mm, a little less. Sit on it a little less. Yeah, that probably works right there. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, grab your shoe. Get your shoe. <laughs> And by the way, she's wearing socks and black leggings because we did not have black tights. All right, so you got your foot in the shoe, right? All right, and that's okay, that's okay. It, it looks floofy, it's all good. All right, so extend your leg out just a little bit more, your shoe leg, your shoe leg. Yep, now lean over both arms, um, reach, you, yes, pull your hair down and let's, yeah, keep your face. Oh, that's, I think, pretty good, except I can see your back, but that's okay. Can you pull your shirt down a little bit? It's really hard when you're wearing a crop top. Yeah. Choke Don't choke yourself. <laughs> okay. Let's try that. And so reach down with both arms. Now turn your head slightly my way, but look down at your shoe. That's good right there. Don't
so we're all done. I hope that you learned a little bit on how to set up certain shots and to think about images in relation to what I have at home or perhaps what I could substitute if I don't have these things. Um, I cannot wait to see what you come up with. The Getty Museum Challenge has been making me laugh so much uh, while I've been stuck in my house with nothing to do other than talk to my camera and make videos. So send me your images, email them to me, uh, Flipgrid, text, you guys know how to do it. Uh, if you're not a Shady Oak Artling, you can also get in on the challenge by using the hashtag Getty Museum Challenge. Uh, go search it. There's so many things out there. All right. I hope that you guys have a great week and that we all um, are staying safe and being smart and that we're not quite going crazy uh, as we're stuck in our homes. But hopefully this uh, art challenge will give you a little bit of something fun to do. Until next time. See you later. Now, disclaimer, don't go looking at art without your parents, for real. So this is what happens when you eat lunch outside. Hmm. Not really sure. I know this is the story that you all have been waiting for, the pink haired pretzel hatchet. So after I made my green eyebrow, I just took some wiki sticks and started playing. The first thing I made was the pretzel and pretended to eat it for a while. And then I thought that what well, it would be really funny if I turned the pretzel into a battle ax but it looked kind of dumb in the middle, so I put it on the side and proceeded to chop my husband with it. Um, and he didn't think it was very formidable, so then I added the pink spikes, but that didn't work either, and he was not impressed, and he decided to name it the pink-haired pretzel hatchet. And that's the pink-haired pretzel hatchet. Pink hair? Spikes? I don't know. I still think it looks like spikes, but I guess I wasn't the one who named it.